TCU quarterback Trevon Boykin arrested by San Antonio police. Quarterback Trevon Boykin arrested after a bar fight. TCU quarterback Trevon Boykin has been suspended from Saturday's Valero Alamo Bowl game. He, he's been charged with third degree felony assault. Boykin just got arrested and I'm like, you're kidding me. The guy that was arrested was Trevon Boykin. Do stupid things in stupid places at stupid times around stupid people. They're gonna play the football game without him. They're not canceling the game. They're going to play it without it. So don't think you're not replaceable, because you are. I'm kind of disappointed in him. I was like, come on. Like, I read the whole story, and I was like, really? Like, you could have just held it together. It was a selfish move that really could have, could have really hurt the team. No, like this is this was our chance, and Boykin's like the guy. You know, he's the one that's going to help us win this. Like, there's we a lot of hope was lost, I would say. Well, you know, this team's probably not going to win this game now. But to fully understand the story of the Alamo Bowl, we got to rewind the clock. We are ready now to unveil the four teams who will compete for the national championship in the first college football playoff. So let's take a look at the bracket right now, and we will start at the top. Sitting at number one, Alabama holds his spot. Sitting at number two, the Oregon Ducks. Let's take number three. Florida State. It is Florida State, and it will be the Buckeyes of Ohio State and five and six left out in this order. How do you drop TCU that was number three and regard it as better than Florida State all the way down to number six? TCU belonged in the Final Four because TCU clearly was one of the four best teams in America. In their body work at that moment. They had gone from three You shouldn't, to in my opinion, have TCU third and then a week later they went 55-3 and they dropped out. Just got burned so badly, it fell from number three in the ranking just last week, all the way to number six, out of the playoffs and into the Peach Bowl? Are you kidding me? <laughs> the TCU Horn Frogs are now in the Peach Bowl? You want to talk about all-time disrespect? I think every, all the seniors, at least, uh, you know, every single one of them was really ticked off that we didn't get in the playoffs that first year because we really felt like we were the best team in the country. I mean, we were scoring 50 plus points a game. We had one of the best defenses. Um, and then you go out and beat an Ole Miss team that you know beat Alabama that year. Uh, the way we did, it's, it's just kind of uh, one of those things where that next year, we, everybody was hungry. Um, every senior was hungry. Uh, the coaches, they, they were hungry. You know, it, it was just, uh, uh, you know, we, we got to watch the plane go and we didn't get on it. We, we were left out. That year, we, sh we should have been in there. With the Peach Bowl in the rear view, the 2015-2016 season was all about one word, redemption. Taking a shot, listen me, touchdown TCU. Boykin steps into a deep ball into one-on-one -on -one coverage. Dotson pulls it in. It was fourth down. Fans were just going nuts, and uh, Boykin threw that pass. Dotson tipped it. My immediate thought was, well, that's it. And then everybody was just hands on their head. What really struck out with that team was they knew how to win. And that's just an intangible, such an X factor. You look at some of the games we had that year, you know, to go to Lubbock and you win on a tip pass in the end zone. And that's just part of the story. I remember watching the, the Kansas State game and I remember pacing at the apartment we were watching out and I looked down at my Fitbit and my Fitbit said my heart rate was 150 beats per minute. I was watching a football game, why, why was my heart rate that high? So it's, we really were invested in it at that point. Boykin pulls it out, runs it, gets a first down. You're down 18 at the half and we come back to be on top at the end of the day. You know, it was a team that um, I thought it was Coach Patterson's best coaching job. 
Man, is every season gonna be like this? This is like unbelievable. I can't can't believe this. Stillwater, Oklahoma. The stage was set. A huge game for the Frogs. Right when we thought it couldn't get any worse, Josh Doxson goes down. Rudolph looking down the field. Rudolph caught James Washington. The answer, 74 yards. Boykin. And another interception. Guess who? Whitener. How about this? Oklahoma State. The Frogs, we bounce back. It's Turpin time. Devontae Turpin cutting it against the grain, spinning his way free, using his speed to the sideline with blocks and a TCU touchdown. Boykin, he's down. Another star player for the Frogs walking to the locker room. Uh, we lost, um, you know, guys like Trevon Boykin and Josh Dotson to injuries. Uh, not just those two guys, people forget also our starting center, Joey Hunt, who the next year would start as a rookie in the NFL. He went out with an injury, you know, and we just kept Wilson finding ways to win. Seaman intercepted. Throw it right to Ty Summers. Cut down at the 46. Three-man rush gets home. Terrell Lathan puts an end to Kansas's hopes. to his right to throw down the middle and that's a dangerous pass and it's intercepted. Fade to the corner of the end zone and it's caught. Touchdown. And all we had to do was kick an extra point to tie it. But that's not what the Frogs decided to do. Gary Patterson going out on a limb here. He wants to go for two to take this victory on the road and walk out as winners. It's knocked down. The Frogs leave Oklahoma disappointed. Here we go. It's Baylor TCU, one of the best rivalries in college football. The hatred runs deep between these schools, and losing is not an option. He's going to fire into the end zone. It's caught. Did he hang on? He did. Touchdown, Stewart. He put his shoulder down. There's Chapin. Another touchdown for Devin Chapin. Sure on third down. Jump ball. And it's picked off inside the five by Howard. And Howard takes it back to the 17. Or playoff game. As uh, Johnson throws it deep. And this is intercepted by Nick Orr. Just left the game. As the quarterback Johnson tries to run, he lost the ball, and it's picked up by TCU. Josh Carraway on the run. They're not going to catch him. Carraway with a TCU touchdown. Boykin stepping up, and he'll run. And Boykin 
through from behind, lost the ball. Baylor has it. And here's the jump pass. It's caught. It was a dogfight as Baylor and TCU trade punches, and no one seems to be giving in. And Boykin keeps. He's in. Touchdown, TCU. Baylor rushes three. Boykin looking. End zone wide open. Touchdown, Turpin. 35 pounds. He's going to hand it off to Chapin. He's taken down for a loss. TCU wins. Baylor's hopes of a Big 12 title and a shot of the college football playoff gone. That team just knew how to win and they believed in each other. Prior to the Alamo Bowl, I did not know much about Cole Housen. He was like our, what was he, like third string? And everything we were hearing on like ESPN and everything was like, yeah, they're in, TCU's in big trouble. Brown was probably the one football player I hadn't interacted more than like once with. Uh, we didn't know anything about Bram. Uh, I remember someone, us making jokes about how like trying to figure out how to say his name. Bram Kohlhausen, uh, B-R-A-M-K-O-H-L-H-A-U-S-E-N. Um, coming out of high school, I was the number six quarterback in the state of Texas, and uh, I had offers from uh, numerous schools in the country, uh, from the East Coast to the West Coast. Uh, I ended up going to University of Houston and uh, got lost in transition there with uh, Kevin Sumlin when he moved on to Texas A&M. And uh, after he moved on, I kind of just went over uh, to a junior college and I needed to play. I got buried in the depth chart. Um, nobody you know, gave me a, a chance over there. Uh, once I went to junior college, I was uh, player of the week there three, three, three weeks in a row. And then the fourth game, uh, I tore up my shoulder and really never thought I was ever gonna play football again uh, because, I mean, who wants damaged goods in uh, the D1 ranks when there's so many talented quarterbacks out there? Uh, and then we were fortunate to have Bram pick TCU. Uh, he could have gone other places, but he wanted to play at a very high level of college football. He wanted that major college football experience. And it tells you about him that um, he was willing to be number two or number three. He just wanted to experience college football at the highest level. And so he was a walk-on when he came, and then he wound up beating out scholarship players to become the number two quarterback. And then, you know, coming to TCU as a walk-on, uh, paying for school, paying for books, never done that before. And uh, so I, I, it was very humbling, it was, it was tough. Um, there were nights where, you know, you wanted to quit or like, why am I showing up to practice when I'm not even, you know, practicing? Uh, but it was, it was awesome, I'm, I'm really glad I stuck through it. But e each week, you'd come in and, and prepare like you were the starter, uh, know the game plan, know it just like Trayvon, he's one of my best friends, so we'd talk about plays at lunch, uh, after practice, at dinner. Um, it was, I, I had to mentally be a starter, but I, I wasn't able to play. Uh, I had lost my dad two weeks, two, two or three weeks prior uh, to, to that game. And losing him was tough. That was probably, that was probably the lowest point in my life. Uh, you know, not having him there to, to call after a game or even call before a game. Uh, it's, it's, it's a special game, and I, I know he, it would have meant a lot to him to see that in person. And don't forget, with the Heisman candidate Trayvon Boykin suspended, senior Bram Kohlhausen makes his first career start in his last career game. And welcome to the Valero Alamo Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Mania. Tonight we are indoors inside the Alamo Dome for a heck of a matchup. Yeah, and when he broke his finger, they lost three games. They said, you get out, take care of yourself. Stay healthy. Nobody in the backfield with Adams. And for now, nowhere to go with the ball being pressured. Getting to the outside, and he'll throw right on the money on the sideline. Vernon Adams takes a deep shot downfield to Carrington as the Ducks strike first blow. You're the running back in college football. He was a part of it. Third and five. Adams pressured. Adams sort of stumbled. Keeps the play alive and finds his tight end. Bale is wide open to the 20. Second and goal. 
Freeman gets the carry. Freeman, that cut and the power. Touchdown. The first half, Oregon is completely dominating the Horn Frog defense. Adams heaves it downfield, and it is caught. What a catch. To, to make the play. Quickly to the line of scrimmage, a little shoulder fake, and another. And fans had absolutely nothing to cheer for. That's what it all revolves around is the defender makes contact. That contact could force a player out of bounds. And he is playing like an inspired kid tonight. Adams on the move, throws a dart, caught at the five. Tight end in motion. Royce Freeman, touchdown. Leeds also the president of the United States. Vernon Adams throws on the move, another perfect pass. The Ducks continue to lay the hammer down on the Frogs for their four straight TD. Goodness. Fun of the game. And it did give TCU good field position then, so we'll see if the result is the same here. And the punt is blocked. Oregon, Buckner grabs it and runs forward. And Oregon thinks they got a first down out of it. Buckner grabbed it out of the air. Gary Patterson. The kick was blocked, recovered by the kicking team behind the line of scrimmage. That is a legal advance beyond the line again. It's a first down. Now that is truly when everything's going against you. I remember talking to my colleague Grant McGallard just saying, well, that's it. It's one of those days. Um, when you have that happen, you're not going to catch any breaks. It was, it was a tremendous play by Buckner. Now Adams keeps it and takes a huge hit. My goodness. And we'll hope that Vernon Adams is okay. I don't think he is. You know, at that point, I was like, okay, well, maybe that's something that could maybe give TCU a little edge with Jeff Lockie coming in. Lockie spikes the ball into the turf. Every time we got a first down, there was a penalty. Uh, and then there's turnovers, and I didn't play very well. Uh, so going into halftime, I thought I was getting benched. I don't, I don't know what was going through the coaches' minds keeping me in there. Freeman will get the first down and more to midfield and still going. 47 yards, it would be the career long for Aiden Schneider, who's been very accurate this year, kicking indoors. That kick is on the way, and it is good. The Frogs were looking for anything to change the outlook of this game. Did you change outfits to change up the uh, mojo in this game? Yeah, black wasn't working. <laughs> Indeed it wasn't. If it were only that easy, right, Mac? And let's get back in this ball game. Now, one thing, I'm not saying it's a total parallel. With uh, I never considered turning off the game because, one, I'm not that type of fan. Uh, and, two, mainly because I had... Um, I grew, so I grew up a Texas Tech fan, and I had witnessed the previous largest comeback in a bowl game in 06 with Texas Tech coming back being down 38-7 to midway through the third quarter. So I definitely knew TCU had the capability of doing it. They just needed to get something rolling. Change the wardrobe. That's a nice turn up field and a first down TCU. Comfortable quarterback for TCU. Everything's working right now. And then all I can tell you is... Um, at halftime, something flipped because I saw him like warming up pregame. He he didn't really look loose; he looked tight. And then at halftime, he was just like, "Well, shoot, what do I have to lose?" And that's that's yeah, the one thing I did notice. Down, 0 for eight in this game. They need 13 here. Better protection this time. That delivery on the money, and then a slip tackle for a much bigger gain. It is a first down. Bullhausen. He does look much better now. For TCU, a little slower tempo on this first down play again. Lots of time to throw, dumps it short, and Hicks breaks a tackle himself. And they will get the ball snapped, hand it off. Hicks with a nice cut, trying to get there, and we'll see. I think he got it. And now just knowing that platform, having the platform of the OU game, it was always just, uh, it was in the back of my head that, you know, we can, we can play. Uh, you know, we did it against OU, we can do it against Oregon. Their quarterback was out. Uh, we just needed to score points, and uh, that second half was it was nuts. But we we definitely knew we had to score every time we touched the ball. Throughout the first half, the feel of the game, 
The energy in the building has changed. And after the touchdown, TCU will kick it to Nelson and Oregon. Nelson, this one's returnable. Nelson on his feet for how long? Not long. He's going down. Now the ball comes out of the end. I think he was down, although there's been no signal yet. I thought he was down, but I also thought TCU pounced on the ball. So if they're saying it was a live ball, this could be Rooting TCU on the ball. There's a fumble recovered by TCU. Wow. In the pocket. Rollhausen. Now he will run. Rollhausen. Trying to throw, now trying to run. Kohlhausen, touchdown! You know, as the second half progressed, uh, we were on the Oregon side, uh, where the fans were, and we had to open their press box. So, as each touchdown came for TCU, you know, the Oregon fans got a bit quieter, and TCU got a bit louder, and surely but slowly, the entire, you know, noise shifted across the entire stadium. Almost and that place was just rocking. Now he'll throw deep. The gain of 36. How about that play? Yeah, it looked like he was faking the pooch punt. Had the tight end down. Once the we started getting scrambles. like really within two touchdowns, I was like, crap, I gotta flip the switch, go back to Jaden like it's a close game. Cause I might have to make one or two, which happened, you know, to, to tie it or to, to win the game or something like that. So I, I wasn't prepared, but I just had to flip the switch um, and get kind of serious again instead of eating peanut butter and jellies and laughing. <laughs> Kohlhausen steps up, that throw is complete. Low snap again. Lockie heaves it incomplete. Up to second and 11. The snap, pressure comes immediately, he takes a hit and delivers the ball on target. Is definitely the ally of the Ducks though. Kohlhausen throws. Once the fourth quarter started, people, I was getting text messages from friends who had left and said like, crap, we're trying to get back in, like the line's so long, like what do we do? I'm like, I don't know what to tell you, I'm still in my seat. Lopsided. Now it's almost like a wildcat. Direct snap to Green, he gets the block from the quarterback, and touchdown. You look at Cole Housen, he leads. I love throwing that block for Aaron Green. That was cool, because uh, he was he was uh, cussing up a storm that he wasn't getting the ball that play, so we switched it for him, and uh, I I'm glad I got him in the end zone. Who is the quarterback on the two-point play? They pitch it over, and the throw, two points from Nixon to Jones. How about it? Going out for that kick, I was just like, shoot, I've made so many kicks to win a game, to put it in overtime before. I was like, if I miss this, I don't, my reputation is done. You know, TCU officially hates Jaden. To tie the game. Overcome. I mean, he's Mr. Clutch. I felt really confident, especially just Overcrumb being our kicker throughout the years and what I've seen him do, no doubt. And they've come all the way back. Final play of regulation. Derek Kendrick really had his defense on lock right there. Uh, what he said in halftime was, was we're going to stop him every time and you guys just have to score. And I told him we would, and that's what happened. Cramps could be a factor. Second and seven. A little pump fake, and Cole Alts is running. First down. It was pretty stressful. And like everyone around us, because so many people have left, that like people were just pacing up and down the aisles, just walking up and down. Six, TCU with the ball first. That was my first overtime game in college. And uh, so I was just trying to get familiar with the rules, really. You know, we, 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 knew, we, needed, we knew we needed to score. Uh, we, could, we weren't going to win with a field goal. Uh, and we, we went down there, we scored with E-Man on that post route. Uh, he made a heck of a catch. He's got to get the snap. Good snap, Freeman. Trying to push his way in. Touchdown! That was all Royce Freeman there. Hit in the backfield, hit it the two. Stood up, keeps powering in for the touchdown. Second overtime. Good snap, kick, kind of wobbles. Obacron drills it, 
from 46 to send the Frogs into the third overtime. Kohlhauser, almost like an option style play. He'll turn the corner. Touchdown. You know, with that touchdown in overtime where he literally ran through the defenders and scampered into the end zone, that was just, I think, one of his best moments of his career, obviously, and just one of TCU's best moments of all time. That photo of him doing the Raisin brand. Low snap, it's on the turf! The must get, they need eight. My friend and I were like squeezing each other's hands so tight that like I had marks like from where her nails were like the hand. And low snap, Lockie pressure, stepping up. Lockie throws, incomplete! He throws, incomplete! We saw something else tonight in San Antonio. That matches the largest comeback in bowl history. Purple shirt works. The purple shirt works. Winners of the 2016 Valero Alamo Bowl, the TCU Horn Frogs. How about this football team? Ever since we started, you've always been behind us. It's been about one thing. It's been about family and never giving up. We're all we need. No Boykin. No Doxon. Down 31 and a half. No problem. Don't ever count out the frogs. Virginia, because this is not a game. Give them hell, TCU.